Live from the Plymouth Canton Educational Park, you're listening to News File at 5.30 on 88.1 The Park. I'm Fahad, and in tonight's news, Schoolcraft College celebrates a renovation, and Canton Lunch and Learn looks at pollinator gardens. Now, for the latest news that matters in your community. Schoolcraft College's Vista Tech Center has been reimagined in an $11 million renovation that the college hopes will bring the community together. The Vista Tech Center is home to Schoolcraft's culinary program, restaurant, and community meeting spaces. It has been outfitted with new features and facilities for students, businesses, and the community. The Vista Tech Center renovation includes three culinary establishments, including the American Harvest Restaurant, Main Street Cafe, and the Craft Grill. The Vista Tech Center also features an award-winning brewing and distillation program. The center includes a co- collaborative learning studio with special seating, video screens, and demonstration kitchen that is available for corporate and student events. President of Schoolcraft College, Dr. Glenn Cerny, says the renovated center will help facilitate collaboration within the community. We envision that the more business and the more industry meetings that happen, that signals good collaboration for this area. And that's what we're trying to be as a catalyst to increase that type of activity within Southeast Michigan. Schoolcraft College encourages anyone interested in the new facility to take a tour of the campus or visit the new facility. More information is available at schoolcraft.edu. You have the chance to help learn how to grow your own pollinator garden this fall when the Local Impact Alliance hosts nonprofit organization Creating Habitats for Pollinators. The session is part of Local Impact Alliance's Lunch and Learn program. Guests will take home knowledge on how to build their own gardens full of native wildflowers, which will support the lives of many pollinators. Founder of Creating Habitats for Pollinators, David Hammond, says the workshop is important because the more pollinator gardens an area has, the better the environment will be. And so they're a good kind of benchmark to see how we're doing in terms of a healthy environment. If the pollinators are doing well, we're doing well. Create Your Own Pollinator Garden will take place on October 11th at Canton Township's Administrative Building on Canton Center Road from 11.30 to 12.30 p.m. Guests are encouraged to bring their lunch to the visit. For more information, visit localimpactalliance.org. The impending government shutdown tops our look at state and national news tonight. Congressional congressional party planners will want to make certain to seat House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and Florida Congressman Matt Gates at separate tables. The two replic- the two Republicans reportedly got into a heated exchange today during the closed door meeting on avoiding government shutdown. Gates has repeatedly threatened to have McCarthy ousted as Speaker if he accepts a bill that doesn't include deep spending cuts. A law professor at George Washington University is among the first witnesses of the impeachment inquiry into President Biden. Professor Jonathan Turley testified the House has met the threshold to launch an inquiry, but he doesn't believe there is enough sufficient evidence to support articles of impeachment. House Republicans claim the president has improperly benefited from his family's foreign business dealings while in office. We'll find out tomorrow if United Auto Workers are going to further expand their strike against the big three automakers. UAW President Sean Fain said he will make an announcement Friday morning. Fain added 38 General Motors and Stellantis parts plant to the strike last Friday, while Ford was spared thanks to progress made in contract talks. The writer's strike is over, but Hollywood's actors are still picketing, demanding better pay and protections. On Wednesday, SAG-AFTRA announced they will begin negotiations again next week. The talks will be attended by several executives from the Actors Union and Alliance of Motion Picture to television producers. For News File at 5.30, I'm Fahad. Your look at Campus News is next. Your place for Plymouth Canton Community Schools updates. It's Campus News. In Campus News, Canton Girls Volleyball will host their annual charity night game to benefit the Plymouth Canton Community Schools Clothing Bank when the team takes on Heartland on Tuesday, October 3rd with freshman NJV at 5 and varsity at 6.30. 
Fans can help the clothing bank by bringing new or gently used jogging pants, tennis shoes for high school students, and teen clothing for the school. They'll also have a special drawing raffle, baskets, and a bake sale to help support the cause. PCCS TV is the new home for the district's digital content, offering expanded information and entertainment that's better than ever. Subscribing to PCCS TV via YouTube will give viewers new ways to interact with the school's district with an inside look at the innovative learning going on in classrooms, go behind the scenes with award-winning extracurricular offerings, and catch live stream sports, concerts, and performances, and reporting from on-site events across the PCCS community. To subscribe for free, visit PCCS TV on YouTube. Plymouth Canton Educational Park students can audition to be on the staff of 88 One The Park, one of the top high school radio stations in the state. Applications are available at 88OneThePark.com and are due tomorrow night. For Campus News, I'm Brody. Your look at sports is next. Oh, come on. Hey, Stacy, Why are you bumming? Hey, Rick. It's my ridiculous phone. Every time I try to call up my favorite playlist, it crashes. You know you wouldn't have these problems if you had one of these. What is that? This, my lady, is called a boombox. All I have to do is lift it on my shoulder, <laughs> flip the switch, and turn a giant knob until I find 88 One The Park. Oh, I love that song. They play 80s music on 88 One The Park? Oh, for sure, Stace. Every Thursday night from 6 to 7 p.m., they have Back to the 80s. The show always has a great mix of totally awesome tunes, from hair metal to new wave and everything in between. Wow, that's so cool. Mind if I listen with you? Actually, you need to take a turn with this thing. It takes these cell batteries, and my back is killing me. Tune to 88 One The Park every Thursday from 6 p.m. for Back to the 80s, a full hour of classic 80s tracks hosted by Sam Verdon. Be there or be square. What? Football, baseball, basketball, hockey. It's time for News File at 530 Sports. The Lions and Packers kick off week four of the NFL season tonight on Thursday Night Football at Lambeau Field. First place in the NFC North is on the line as both teams enter with records of 2-1. and one. The Lions are coming off a 20-6 home win over Atlanta on Sunday. Last night's game between the Tigers and Royals at Comerica Park was suspended. Rain and poor field conditions forced officials to pause the game in the fifth inning. Detroit had a 4-0 lead thanks to home runs by both Tyler Nevin and Miguel Cabrera, which was his 511th of his career. The game will resume in the fifth inning this afternoon with the Tigers winning 8-0. The second game is currently being played with the Tigers leading 7-3. The Red Wings are in Washington, D.C. to clash with the Capitals tonight in preseason action. The teams will then rematch on Saturday at LCA. The Wings opened up their eight-game exhibition slate with a 4-3 win over the Penguins on Tuesday. Michigan State University has officially fired head football coach Mel Tucker. The university began the process to fire Tucker for calls last week as he's under investigation for sexual misconduct complaint. Tucker has been suspended without pay since September 10th. In a statement last week, Tucker and his lawyers called the school's intent to fire him unjustified for several reasons. It's another busy week of college football this weekend. On Saturday, second-ranked and undefeated Michigan heads to Lincoln to face Nebraska in its first road game. Michigan State visits Iowa. Central Michigan hosts Eastern Michigan. And Western Michigan entertains Ball State. Now, for News Out 530, I'm Brody Klein. Your look at traffic and weather is next. From M14 to I-94. Your look at traffic starts now. In news file at 530 traffic, the Ann Arbor Road ramp to I-275 northbound is closed due to construction. The I-275 off-ramp is closed at M14 and I-96. Speeds are slower approaching the connect- connecting point of I-275, M14, and I-96 due to construction. That's all for traffic. A look at weather is next. 88 won the park with your local weather forecast. Look for a shower early tonight, leaving behind clearing skies and a low of 57. Tomorrow will be a pleasant, will be pleasant with partly sunny skies and a high of 72. Currently in Plymouth Canton, it's 62 degrees under cloudy skies. On your source for the best local news, 88.1 The Park. For Brody, I'm Fahad on Newsfile at 5.30. Stick around, Backstage Pass is next, followed by Back to the 80s at 6 and Plymouth and Canton's Hit Music at 7. 